confirmed by Major League Baseball, confirmed by the San Diego Padres. Mm -hmm. Tony Gwynn has passed away today after a four-year battle with salivary gland cancer. He is, of course, a Hall of Famer. Got his 3,000th career hit in Montreal. I was covering the game, and I was telling the story about how Montreal fans were, for whatever reason, so negative towards Tony Gwynn. When he did get that 3,000th hit, he got a very nice round of applause from the fans of there. It was a smallish crowd. I remember that. But, uh, yeah, he, I'll tell you, someone, someone who covered baseball back in the day, I'm going to call it that, with Tony Gwynn, Tony Gwynn would, San Diego was such a small media market. Mm -hmm. There were at most two writers covering the team. This is before the internet and everything. There, there were days, I mean, they'd go on the road and there'd be one writer. And you'd come into Montreal, and then Montreal there'd be four or five writers. You always, always, always had a chance to have FaceTime with Tony mm -hmm. Gwynn. He would always sit down and talk to you. And, I mean, he would talk to you. It would be nothing for Tony Gwynn to talk to you for 25 minutes right. just about you know, hitting and stuff, and, and he uh, he really was, you know, everybody says, well, this guy's a good guy, this guy's a good guy, I can tell you, for a visiting, for a visiting writer, uh, Tony Gwynn was just about the best I, to have I was, to deal with. I was very fortunate enough to play against him, and I just have a quick story. Yeah. He, I, we just couldn't get him out because he's one of the best hitters all around. He slapped the ball everywhere. Smallest well, hands, too. If you ever saw the guy, tiny, tiny yeah, hands. Yeah, well, he used a real small bat, too, yeah. if, I, if I know correctly. It was like a 31-ounce bat. Which yeah, he no, called it his pea ever, shooter. He called yeah, it his pea shooter. Nobody ever uses that. So we, when I, was, when I played for the Brewers, and we had this submarine guy named Mike Myers. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever remember him or not. I think he pitched for the Red Sox for a while, too. And he would throw way down under, and, well, we couldn't get him out, so the only guy left in the bullpen, hey, Let's bring a submarine lefty in to face the lefty. That's just common sense. <laughs> well, he, he, you know, Tony liked to take a pitch every once in a while. So sure he, he takes did. the first pitch, and it's like he was setting him up. And then Mike threw him, I think, the same pitch, not the next pitch, but the pitch after that. And I think Tony hit a, a double to left center field, and it was just so easy. It was like facing any other pitcher. Mm -hmm. And I always wonder, I always wanted to ask him, how do you do that? Because I never could do it. And he just made everything on the baseball field, hitting-wise, look so easy, no matter what, who he was facing. And I was always very envious of that just because I could never do it. And he's, he'll, I think, uh, throughout the baseball world, he's going to be really missed just for, you know, when you think of the Padres, who's the first guy you think of? Yeah, and in uh, and, and San Diego as well, he's a huge Hugely, he was a hugely important member of the community, mm -hmm. gave an awful lot of money, an awful lot of money to his alma mater, San Diego State, right. practically built the baseball program uh, or rebuilt the baseball program from scratch. So, again, uh, Tony Gwynn uh, passing away today 